Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is our Perspect 10 list where you get five additional books that are only available on YouTube. And if you like to submit some books for our uh, Perspect list that we, we can vote on, please submit them to us on Instagram or send us uh, or put a comment below, not in the live chat, but on the video itself. You can hashtag it also with hashtag Perspect 10. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our number 15 book. At number 15, we have Secret Wars number one, The Third Print. So this is a tough <laughs> book to find from 2015. It's a classic Alex Ross cover, and it also has a cameo appearance of Victor Von Doom as God Emperor uh, Doom. So for our number 14 book, we have Eve number one, cover A. I, I love I love this book. Um, Eve from Boom. They, they, when, it, when it first came out, people were paying attention to it. It's, they're not paying attention to it. It's very cheap right now. The story is fabulous. I, it's, I think this is a fucking great pick. Yeah, and this is the period of time because I mean, what issue two just came out. So for for some of these independents, the the heat is kind of building, but you can still get copies of Cover A for a fairly cheap price. They are rising. But you don't have to pay through the nose to get a to get a cover A at this point. And yeah, it checks a lot of boxes. And Boom is in high gear as far as uh, pitching pitching their properties to hit the screen. So I like the looks of this one. At number thirteen, we have Rise of the Black Panther number two, cover A. A beautiful, a beautiful Brian Brian Still Freeze cover. Um, you can still find this book in backbins, believe it or not. Um. Currently at $25, but now I'm seeing prices rise to about $40. If you can find it in the back, bench, by all means, try to, try to pick up a copy. Yeah, I like this. I like this book, Mel. Last time I checked, there there was a retcon origin story in this book. Wakanda or, or Namor and Wakanda. When I got it in 2017, 2018, I remember I bought, I read it right when I got home. But uh, yeah, this is a good one. I love the cover too. At number 12. We have Hulk number two from 2008. You know, this is the the infamous Red Hulk series. Um, newsstand copies from number one all the way up to 16. It's the first full appearance of the Red Hulk. Now, I say that with, you know, all good intentions. Yes, Hulk one is the market choice, the book at this time. But this has been a long time coming. Comic books are not, you know, first appearances are not based on the cover. Now, there is, we have recognized uh, cover spec and cover appearances or what have you, but a cover is, is just basically that. It's, it's an advertisement for what is basically to come or what's inside the book, so you buy it. Red Hulk is on, on the front of Hulk 1, but he does not appear in any panels in that book. Sure, there is a Hulk in there, and he's got the same, you know, cool black headward scissor hand hairdo, like kind of like this thing right here. <laughs> and uh, um, but the thing is, is that you know the way the panels are shot, writer or or uh, or creator or what have you, is telling the story kind of through like a like a night lens or or most of the uh, people in the characters in the story believe that it was rick jones it's ross he finally turns into the red hulk in issue two long time coming first full appearance hulk number two it's uh, it's it's a dollar bin book there's some great variants for it there, there, there's a really tough second print too if you're out there looking for it with a different cover so um keep an eye open for that That's yeah a cool I, one. I don't know shit about the second print <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the the second print is the the second print is a, is that Ed Ed McGinnis wrap. No, I spoke about this before. This is the this is the first this is the first appearance. This is the first first without appearance. debate without debate. I mean, people can people can push back on Thor number two. They can't um, push because it, 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 she, she's full. It was full. It's a full by every definition, but whatever. But this one is harder to push back on because this is really where he shows up. Right? It's a good grab. 
At number 11, we have Captain Marvel, number 23, cover A. So I just thought it was appropriate to put this on there. I mean, you know, the book is only what's seven, eight months old, but it was, a, it was a good one. It was an FOC spec book. It had, a, it got a little bump on release. I mean, at one point I think it was like 20 bucks, but now, I mean, I, I'm seeing copies listed for like between eight to 15, but in this book, you have two first appearances. One that's the most important. We'll talk about him in a second, but uh, you have the first appearance of uh, Bridget, Thor, uh, Bridget Thor's daughter, but the most important appearance here is Oaf. And, you know, Namora is being specced on, which we'll touch on later. Is it Automa or the Fantastic Four 33? Um, and then also uh, Namor himself. Well, how about let's throw his son in the mix. And his son's name is O. Bad dude. And this is this is a really, really good book. There's a variant for this book. Um, it doesn't have him on the cover, unfortunately, but it's by D uh, Russell Dodderman. And um, let me tell you, it, it is gorgeous. It's an open order variant too. But uh, yeah, this is one you could dig out of uh, back bins and it, they might even still be on some LCS's mm -hmm. chef, uh, yes. shelf still with some dust on them. Yeah. And I feel bad for her, her last name is Thor's daughter. You better come with the pain because that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> Man, she be your last name is Jordan's son. You better know how to dribble the ball at least. All right. And for the main event, our top 10 books. Coming in at number 10, we have Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur, number 34. Yeah. I, I remember when this book first came out, I was like, oh, I think this is a great idea to change. It's the first appearance of Devil Dinosaur being changed into a human form being uh, called Devin Dinosaur. I said, I think that's a, that's a great thing. I think they're doing this because they're planning their, their big Disney push. Because in my mind, I was like, there's no way they're going to call a show Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. Hey, I was wrong. But... The first appearance in this is, is, is Devil Dinosaur, but it's also the first appearance of um, female demolisher uh, from the from the Wrecking Crew. Could also be you. I think they could also use that character within the, the Moon Girl cartoon, but she definitely needs the adversaries. So it's a very cheap pick to, to pick up. Um, do with the information that what you will. Printer on this book at this point in issue thirty four was. Yeah. I mean, we're talking less than fifteen thousand, right? Probably oh, close sure. to twelve. Um, right closer to five. But, yeah. Well, it's probably a little bit more than that, but whatever it was, it was it was small. It was really small. So um if people get onto this book, it's gonna be gone. So grab it. At number nine, we have Journey into Mystery number six twenty four. Shout out to uh, Vintage Comics and Toys. You can reach him on yes, IP. His name is Phil Lee. He's our team member and our good friend. Mm -hmm. um, he turned us on to this book, and uh, we thought it was only fit to uh, to talk about it with Loki going on or what have you. Or is the first appearance of Leah, who's actually a servant of Hela, but is also the love interest of Kid Loki. Um, I think this was a, a great find. Um, it, you know, it's a Karen Gillan uh, written book. Um, it, it, the artwork is insane. I love this journey in mystery from the from the six twenty two, you know, all the way up. Um, in this modern fear itself uh, tie-in. But I think this character might have a little bit of leg, especially if Kid Loki sticks around. At number eight, we have Agents of Atlas, number four. So this is the first full appearance of Namora in Earth uh, 616 since Golden Age appearance. And she is rumored to appear in Black Panther number two alongside with Namor and Automa as villains of the movie. Marvel Boy finds out that the corpse in her coffin is a holographic projection and she is revived. It is revealed that the poison used to kill her by Lyra only put her in a coma. She can be Marvel's Mira for many years to come. With her Golden Age first appearance so scarce, this, uh, this is one to be had for many collectors. Cover art is done by Tom Cooker. Yeah, I mean, this book is beautiful. I, I love this book. And um, Namora, uh, uh, a cool character, uh, not to be confused with uh, Namorita from uh, New Warriors. At number seven, we have Secret Empire, Brave New World, number one, the one in 25. All right. So this is a one in 25 um, on, on a book that didn't uh, see a ton of orders. Um, this is in many uh, cases, just a pure cover play, sort of yes. a mass 
uh, Namor cover um, on a book um, that probably has somewhere, best case, around a thousand copies floating around out there. So, you know, if you like to chase books that are tough to get, um, you know, this might be one that you want to that you want to jump on. Namor is likely to be uh, a core character within the MCU uh, for for a long, long time. And uh, this baddest cover, um, you know, was one that made the list this week. So all black, all for. black cover, tough nine eight, impossible nine eight for sure. Right. At number six, we have Amazing Spider Man number two ninety three, the new stand edition. You know, this is one of my favorite covers of all time. Craven just jumps off of the cover in that uh, iconic lion's outfit. I mean, I, I could see, you know, with the movie coming out and Aaron Taylor uh, Johnson being casted in the role. I mean, you could see him wearing that. Hopefully he wears pants, though, you know. <laughs> uh, but, but uh, you know, this this story arc, uh, I mean, it, it, it's so under uh, appreciated. It was well written uh, from Craven's Last Hunt. I think in this episode, like, he buries Spider-Man, uh, Craven uh, War the black suit to prove that he was the better Spider-Man. Just, uh, uh, yeah. it, it is such, so uh, undervalued. Uh, there's about 400 copies graded in, in nine, eight, but you could get a nine, eight right now for under 300 bucks. Hmm. Uh, I mean that, that could easily be, you could see Aaron Taylor Johnson in, in some kind of, uh, yeah. outfit like that. Yeah. Uh, at that time, it, it, it's top such, notch. Yeah, top notch, and 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 the newsstand newsstand variant they're they're tough to find in high grade. So if you find them, I I I, I would definitely buy it because this book would is definitely going to be on the upswing. The thing about this storyline is Kerry was just sick of Spider Man shit and just wants to get rid of him. That's oh all yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, was, it, it was such a different. Uh, it, it was um, a, honestly the, it, it was maturely written and it yes. was written in a way where a mm -hmm. very intense story. <laughs> so uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to read the uh, Craven's last hunt, I, I definitely suggest it. So yeah, I, I love this pick. Uh, Craven obviously goes back a lot farther, but I think this run is really what made Craven, you know, the, the villain he is today in a lot of comic collectors minds. He's he's in a standalone movie, but you got you got to think that somehow, some way, they, they've got to have a Spider Man in the in in the Craven movie, man. All they would need is a Tom Holland appearance, and you would hope that there was some kind of deal made where he makes some cameos in some of these Sony pictures in order for Marvel to to uh, use uh, Tom Holland. It's a it's a different ball game with with uh, some of these Sony movies. Hell, you know, Sony owns the rights to Miles. Hell, Miles could come out. You never know. And I'm not <laughs> saying that's going to happen, but that, that you know, something's in play here. They wouldn't just pump out these these characters, you know, because they're trying to build the Sinister Six. Correct. So you can't do that without Spider-Man, you know. So they'll, they'll go multiverse and they'll hunt down Andrew Garfield. There you go, <laughs> <laughs> there you go man. You know, when I was a kid and, and I picked this book up, I, I was working at my uncle's uh, comic shop and I remember looking at this cover and I could hear the rain. And that's how good this cover is drawn. It's, it's got a lot of sentimental value uh, to me. And I think that it, hopefully, finally, it's going to get its due. Uh, it's just due. At number yeah. five, we have Punisher Annual Number Two. Great pick. So this is the first time uh, the Punisher and Moon Knight uh, go head to head. Um, so in the historical book, uh, no matter which way you slice it, um, there is some speculation that John Bernthal is going to make his way into the uh, into the MCU uh, in the Moon Knight series, and that's why this book is picking up a little steam. But uh, uh, a really cool historical book, nonetheless, and. Uh, Something that makes sense to have your, in your collection for the right price. Um, I, I think it's a pretty cool pick. I mean, to have these two psychopaths go at it, it's <laughs> classic. That would be that would be so great. And to bring Punisher back, the, the pop that 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 would give the people 
Oh man, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, Pretty two crazy. absolutely crazy guys going going head to head. Give the fans you know, what they want. Give the fans what they want, man. You don't see you don't see that a lot. You don't really see two just criminally insane people go at it on, on, on the big screen. This is it's it's right up Marvel's alley. This for this to happen on 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 a, on a big screen or a small screen, I love it. I love the pick. I love I love for this to happen on, on the screen. I love it overall. There is a rising trend too in in the hobby of of going after these first meetings. Uh, in the past, they they haven't really been chased after, but it's you know it's maybe a little bit of a niche right now, but it, it's growing. The first important you know, uh, meet up of, of important characters. Pretty yeah, absolutely, Tony. I think it's drawing in a big way. It's a good point. Pretty sure this came in a poly bag with a card, right? You know what? It may have. I, th I, th I think you might be right. Yeah. And, you know, we're on the subject of a uh, moon night. I want to give our, our listeners a little cornbread. <clears throat> so, uh, my friends all know about this. Uh, we were on, on FOC, but, um, June 23rd, make sure you call your LCS or what have you, um, and make sure you order Marvel uh, Marvel's Voices Pride number one variant and try to get the Luciano uh, Vecchio 1 in 25 anniversary frame. There's a new character. His name is Somnus, and basically he is linked to Moon Knight. Is the highly anticipated Moon Knight series that's finally coming out um, in July. He is going to be a key figure. There's been multiple write-ups on this before FOC, and I haven't heard anybody talking about it. So make sure Marvel Voices Pride number one, and get and, and ask for the uh, one in twenty-five Luciano Vecchio uh, anniversary incentive. All right. At number four, we have Amazing Spider-Man Volume Three, number ten. All right, so this is not a low printed book. I'll just lead with that. This is number 10 of an amazing Spider-Man run. So the print run on this is 100,000 copies. So just want to lead with that. Uh, there is a one in 25, so that would put uh, uh, Gabriel Del Delato did a connecting cover. Uh, oh, give yeah. 4,000 4, copies on this. But anyways, this is the first appearance of Spider-Punk. Uh, of course, we've got the new Spider-Verse movie coming up at some point. Who knows when they're going to drop a trailer? I don't know when it's if when the official release date is. I think it's 2022. Um, what I like about this book, though, is has to do with the first movie. Uh, you know, we we saw some of the characters in the first movie blow up at the time and i think a lot of people were skeptical i'm like really okay we're gonna we're, we're specking on penny parker and 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 spider-man noir i think a lot of people sold at that time those books mm -hmm. have really held their value i mean that book has come out or that movie has come out years ago now and spider-man noir is just as high as it's ever been um so i that gives me hope for a lot of these spider-verse characters moving forward they haven't announced anything officially on who's going to be in Spider-Verse 2. Obviously, the, the main ones are going to be coming back. Uh, Spider-Punk, I think, is is a very popular pick to be in that movie. He's had a Marvel Legends character or a, a action figure. Um, he's been featured on three or four covers over you know since he was released. So, yeah, I, I, I like this book. I like the 1 in 25, but as we know, cover A's are the way to go a lot of times, too. I'm I'm just learning that. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I've been in the game for so long, and I'm learning to cover AIDS. Is this, once once time passes, hey, I raise it a way to go. Because I, I think the character is pretty cool, and um, yeah. and it's one that gets cosplayed a lot. And we know that cosplay, right, can often lead to, um, you know, characters accelerating within the mainstream. So something yeah. to keep in mind for number three. We have What If Spider-Man Joined the Fantastic Four, issue one. Always a classic. Always a classic. With the with the with the series with the new series coming out um soon. I think this is this is a solid pickup. Um, what are they going for? You know anybody know? It's going for about fifty dollars, I think, right now. But it, see, it seems like that book was always a forty fifty dollar book. Even when I was a kid, it was like a forty fifty dollar book. It's, it's a, a great cover, man. Absolutely. 
And yeah, this is actually the uh, first appearance of the Fantastic Five, where uh, Spider-Man joins the Fantastic Four. And then uh, at the beginning of this, you have YouTube, the, the Watcher, starts off the issue explaining the alternate universe. So I would be really surprised if they didn't kick off the Disney What If series like that, where you have the Watcher explaining, like, there's all these alternate universe. But I mean, I don't know. With Loki in play, that, that might change things. This no, is gonna, <laughs> this is all going to tie together. I don't think this "What If" uh, MCU show is going to be a throwaway. I think it's going to tie into what we're seeing with the multiverse stuff from Loki and connect somehow to Doctor Strange. So, um, yeah, this book's been slept on for a long time. It's never been super cheap, but it's never gotten nuts. And uh, I think this is George's pick, not Nico's pick, if I'm not mistaken. So, I think so. Uh, I like this. I like this one a lot. This might be the play for the whole show because they're not pulling the storylines from what I understand from the comics. Like you said, they're, they're they're more concerned on linking it to the MCU. So out of any book to spec on for uh, for the series, it might be this one. Mm -hmm. I, I think 1.4, I think, uh, well, I guess that's what they're calling them, 1.4, like uh, episode four. That's the Gamora and Nebula one. And uh, I'm really excited for that one too, because supposedly they're gonna there's gonna be a little retcon in, in, in for Gamora in the sense that she's gonna be more like rec, a requiem or rec, um, whatever the character that was in that Infinity War that or Infinity Gems or whatever that modern book that came out in 2018. And I heard she's like a straight, she's vicious. And then, um, also, spoiler warning if you yes. have a Turn this off now. Five, four, three, two. Okay. So there's an Easter egg going around in Loki, and it was caught. I've seen it. It looks like Peggy Carter. And they're, they're saying in the speculation world that because Peggy Carter is in the, in the Time Variance Authority, uh, that's where the Easter egg is, she had to be a variant. There had to be some kind of timeline messed up. So um, basically what, what people are thinking is, hey, is this how Peggy Carter became the Captain America, you know, her episode coming? And it's, really? Yeah. yeah. Number uh, two, we have New Avengers 53, the 1 in 15 <laughs> incentive variant. Yeah, this, I mean, so this is one of my favorite artists, Chris Boccolo. He's done some absolutely amazing stuff. Um, so this book, uh, Brother Voodoo, becomes the Sorcerer Supreme, right? So that's the, that that's the big spec on this one. You know, something that's likely to catch steam going forward with Doctor Strange. Um, we will see, but a tough book to come by, given that you know New Avengers was late in its run here. At, you know, in the fifty third issue, so um, a really cool pick and and a cover I really like by one of my favorite artists. Yeah, I, I like this one too, Ben. It's a good pick. One in fifteen, and like me and Ben, we like those one in fifteens. Even even on high print runs. I mean, you know, eighty six thousand orders. I mean, uh, the one in fifteens they make things. You know, and I, you don't see this book around, and it's a really cool uh, a cover photo of Damon Hellstrom, who uh, I thought was Namor at one time. If you go back to one of our <laughs> earlier episodes, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I've read this book like twenty times, and um, one of my our friends or team members, uh, TJ, he brought it up, and I was like, "Duh, I can't believe it." But long story short, um, yeah. So in the book, <clears throat> uh, Brother Voodoo um, is going after. He's he's teamed up with the New Avengers, you know, Doctor Strange and uh, Hellstrom and uh, Spider Woman, what have you, and they're going after the Hood because the Hood is possessed by Dormammu. And they have to go to New Orleans to go get them. And when they're cruising over there, the Aya Agamotto is just like, you know, usually chilling on uh, on Dr. Strange's chest. Well, it just goes up, levitates, and goes straight to Dr. Voodoo. And Dr. Strange starts freaking out. And next thing you know, um, I don't know if you know the backstory or origin on that, but what, who the only person that could wield the Eye of Agamotto with obviously the, the time stone in it, is the Sorcerer Supreme. And then you get your reveal at the end, Dr. Voodoo becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. A lot of people call it a cameo. They think 54 is the full. Honestly, I think 53 is the book. And I think, you know, this is the cover you want to look for. 
solid, solid, solid pick. Just to give you, just to give you guys some numbers, um, there's ten of these on the CGC census. Nine eight. And there's one nine six, one nine four, and that's it. So get yeah. again. I, I'm sorry, Dollar. I was gonna say, like, if it's not the book, then then why are there ten nine eights? You see what I'm saying? So if the, if there's no heat on this book, why are there ten nine eights? Nobody grades a book that has nothing going on. It's great cover, but it it's not that great to make sure that it's a to get it slapped in a nine eight. I I mean I, you know I think there there's a lot of spec value in this book. Absolutely, I would agree, Joe. And for our number one book this week, we have. God Country, number one, the fourth print. Been speculating on this for a long time, at least since I've been, I mean, I, I got on Trunk and Chat in May, June, and me, two Mel. Years, two, two years ago. Yeah. And then um, and then when I became per, the permanent, when I was on there for, you know, a few months, um, yes, sir. the Ultra, Mel, Lucas, we're talking about God Country. It was right before crossovers coming over, so we were speculating on this book. At least I was for the wrong reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but long story short, yeah, there's only uh, um, four printings of this book, and this is actually my favorite uh, printing. The white cover, uh, less than 4,800 copies. I'd say 5,000. Keep it safe. There's also a uh, um, Addie Granoff um, 25th anniversary blind box trade and virgin but uh, god country just got some news um legend i think it's legendary is uh is is taking the wheel basically the same people that did sweet tooth and they're taking the wheel on this and they're going to develop it into a series or movie and I, I just can't wait yeah this cover is absolutely badass man my favorite of all the number ones uh, uh i love this book a really really good pick yeah, I mean it's 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 a tough book. It's a tough book. Yeah, I mean, when you think five thousand sounds like a lot, if you find it out in the wild, snag it up because it's going to be a thing. Uh, yeah. You know, especially if a series or show. And and Donny Cates, I can talk all the smack I want to about him, but you know, at the end of the day, he's a hell of a writer. So this was definitely before the whole second print or late printing craze took off so the only people who bought these were were fans really yeah fans are nobody nobody puts this shit <laughs> i mean that's why we bought reprints right because we either a missed the first and we wanted to read or b we just didn't want to mess up our <laughs> yeah right and then yeah, absolutely was, richie you're right man i remember nobody was checking for a four print though that's just selling shows for years yeah, and this this and this one is beautiful i mean this is this is stunning man i love this book well, thank you for joining us for the ProSpec 10 list. Remember, we like to see uh, community participation in the ProSpec 10, so make sure to submit our uh, submit some books for that you'd like us to vote on, and we'll try. We'll make sure to feature you if you make the list. And thank you for uh, for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Make sure you tag Flipside too. Please throw some books, man. We want your books. We want your picks. We want them in the list. So we want throw them. And don't drink a speck. <laughs> <laughs>